Welcome to Heart Speak Podcast, episode 293. The question is not how or when, but why. Well, hello there, wherever you're in the world. It's good to be back with you. And I'm just back from a wonderful trip to Brazil where I met old friends, made new friends, and really enjoy being in that country, which has so much to offer and the vibrancy of the, the people I just love. We ran a workshop, particularly on the chakras, the energy centers. And as I'm teaching this, the question came up from that throat chakra over and over again of, but how am I going to do this? When is this going to happen? Tell me more. Let me tell you some excuses. And we focused on this for a little while before we realized that actually the question was not the how or the when but the why. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we here on earth? What is the inner driver? What is the inner energy that makes us get up in the morning, move forward? Is it just a desire to be busy, things to do, people to see? But is there a deeper energy? One coming from what I might say is our deep heart, our soul. And that's what I want to explore today. First, however, let's just look at what's going on in the sky. Recently, I was asked, why do you use astrology? And for me, this type of what we call tropical astrology really helps us to see the patterns that are occurring here on Earth and how they may be aligned to what's going on in our sky from our perspective. And so what we have is Pluto going backwards, as I mentioned before. So it's stirring up the past. And we have Mars now in Aries, its own sign. It goes through very fast, but Mars and Aries is a passion for new adventures, new discoveries, but also for war. So unfortunately, there is this energy building that something needs to happen. And the best thing to do is to go into this warlike state which I don't necessarily agree with. We also have Neptune now right at the end of Pisces, and it's going to be there for a long while, going backwards and forwards, 28, 29 degrees. Saturn still moving towards it, although it will never quite reach it. And that Neptune in Pisces has this energy of feeling unlimited, being more in tune with spirit, more in tune with the consciousness of the universe, being able to tap into all that we are. But it also brings issues where Saturn is there as well, saying, okay, maybe I need to follow a particular person to find that path, which is fine, as long as you realize that they are also just another human looking for life. So it's asking us to collect together, find that collective consciousness, but not become attached to it to the point that we give away our power. And as I look back in the history books of when this had been like this before, Neptune right at the end of Pisces, there has both been this energy of new discoveries, uh, being able to see the stars or new ideas, religions, et cetera, coming out of this energy. But there's also been oppression, particularly around the witch hunts and other things that have happened. So I think we're going to see both happening at this time. And what we're looking for is not necessarily new religions. We're looking for being able to connect to all that we are. And that includes our connection to the star people, the galaxies, the universe, to the earth, the beings inside the earth, the spirit. So it feels that we are expanding ourselves, not just up, but in all directions, to recognize that it is not just saying, oh, yes, there are these beings out there, but they exist within us. And this takes us into that level of what is happening within our DNA, our structure, our consciousness. And that consciousness at this time is being awoken. So you could say our DNA carries our acacia records, the history of who we are. And as that's being awoken by these waves of energy coming from the galaxy and coming from the universe, 
it's not just me, Christine, that's being woken, but also the consciousness that I have within me that is hundreds of thousands of years old, if not millions of years old. In other words, I have galactic information in me that we might say is in the history books. And I was recently listening to a wonderful interview with Bashar, Dawal Anker actually, who of course channels Bashar. And what he was saying was that at this time, because this consciousness, this light energy within our DNA is waking up, we're experiencing all the activities that we may see as history, let's call it that, the fall of Atlantis, the Orion Wars, the connections to Arturians, etc. All of that's happening. And what he says is that the star beings, or we could say the, the beings who were related to that time, are asking that we, because we are living within this amazing physical reality of transformation, that we work this out so that we create a different future. We create a different outcome than was the outcome when Atlantis fell or Lemurian fell or the Orion Wars, etc. So it's like it's all coming around again. And because of this amazingly unique time on this earth to be here on this planet, this is an amazing time for old scores to be worked out, old ways to be worked out. And it's not just we are the ones doing it, but a lot of what's happening on the earth today is a echo, a reflection of what happened and maybe didn't finish hundreds of thousands, millions of years ago. So you don't have to worry about, am I going to sort this out? <laughs> but that's why we're seeing such a chaotic time at this moment a lot of what's going on is being triggered by, we say, past events, but to be completed now because of this extraordinary time that we're living in, where the waves of consciousness coming onto this planet are far beyond anything that's happened before. And as Bashar says, we've also reached a level of evolution that wasn't there in Atlantis, that wasn't there in Lemuria, wasn't there. So our ability to be living on a higher frequency means that we can transform these energies much faster than we could have done 10,000, 12,000 years ago. Make sense? I hope so. So before you get overwhelmed <laughs> by, oh my goodness, I come back to that question, how, when, or why? Now, what I saw was that energy of how am I going to do this is very much one of activity. It's fine, but it's almost a driving force for many of us. What am I going to do? What's my activity? Am I going to be busy? And the why question is not the same. It's much more of a time of reflection. Why am I doing this? <laughs> why am I here? And when we give ourselves that space to reflect, we start to recognize, when am I doing something that is not in resonance with me, with my soul? When am I doing things that are taking me away from that resonance, not coherent with who I am? Okay, so... Let's say you were a character in some of these places, Atlantis, etc., but you were only relate to the current situation of trying to experience closure or a different type of closure if you were present during that downfall. So you might, well, I mean, many of us have got Atlantean so-called past lives, but we weren't there or didn't experience that level of chaos. So we're only going to be involved with those activities that took place on this planet that we are resonant with. So if you remember your time as Atlantis and the, yay, it was a great time, Lemuria, great time. 
time, Orion, great time. You're not going to get involved with trying to create a different scenario now because that wasn't your experience of that particular civilization. Okay. So what I'm saying here is this is because Neptune is right at the end of Pisces. Pisces is the collective consciousness. This is a time to be really mindful of where am I getting caught up with something that's happening on this earth at this time or a family or a friend that really I don't resonate with. Where am I actually, you know, maybe tapping into too much information? And I might get worried about it, but it's like, okay, now I can, you know, I shut, turn off whatever, and I'm no longer worried about it. So I'm, the why is, why am I getting so concerned about this? Is this part of my history that I promised that I would do something with this life? Or am I just getting overwhelmed and actually need to pull myself out of situations that have nothing to do with me? Now, that's hard to do because... When you're sensitive, you're psychic, everything's to do with you. <laughs> but if we can pull back and say, if this is not for my soul's growth, if this is not in harmony with me, if this is not actually nurturing my soul, I'm giving you very Taurian words because we're in the sun is in Taurus at the moment. This is not enriching me. Then we have to pull out. And let the scenario that needs to work its way out find its way without our interference. And I, that's what I want us all to focus on, not, oh, I'm, I'm focusing from my heart there, I'm just sending love and light. That's not necessarily helping it because in this world of polarity, every time I think of something, oh, there's a war there, I need to some, send love and light, I'm actually focusing on that war as well as the love and light. You've heard me talk about the white horse and the green field. And if I try and separate the two and say, don't think of white horses, the white horse is always in the green field. So if you're trying to focus on something to bring the opposite, unfortunately, you bring both of them. So rather than focusing on one or other, which is very much what's being highlighted at this time, this Piscean duality energy, we're actually creating more of the problem. So as I always say about Pisces, it was never about either or, or pro or against. It was always about the sacred marriage of opposites. So if you want to focus on something, focus on the third aspect, which is that sacred marriage. I'm neither for or against because they're the I am with. If you want to sit in that center, be with something that's compassion. But once we put our energy into one or other, we are literally highlighting both, whether that's what you want to do either, uh, if that's what you want to do. In other words, yes, I want to be pro, I want to be against. But whatever it is that you're fighting against, you're just actually making more of it, even if you think you're sending love and light. So here we are now in the why am I doing this? And that why takes us deep into our real deep heart, that connection. Is this connecting me more fully to myself? And when we're talking about our families, we might say, oh, I'm jumping in there because I really want to help them. Is our helping them coming from a place of saying, well, they're not in the right place, they need my help? Is it coming as a criticism? If we cannot enter into someone else's space without criticism, without judgment, without polarizing, we shouldn't be in there. Again, can we go in with true compassion, which is, I'm with you, no judgment, whatever you want to do. That's much harder for us because we have opinions. Our throat chakra has opinions. <laughs> so this is really saying the why may be where am I involved with something that I shouldn't be where am I attached to a result where am I wanting things to be different for someone when actually it's got nothing to do with me 
Now, at the same time, you might say, my why says, oh, this, I, yes, this would enrich my soul. I have not been in this situation before. Oh, yes, I feel I could be excited by that or passionate, as people say. And this brings me back to the teachings of Bashar, as again described by Daryl Anker. And he says, you know, why are we here in a physical world, a 3D world, as some people call it? It is because of this unique setting in a physical world that has the ability to go through process, creation, transformation. He said, everything already exists. And that might sound strange. You say, well, everything exists. Why, why do we need to do anything? The consciousness of the universe is enhanced by us having an experience with all that exists just as the conscious of my soul is enhanced. So we do, it's not about getting off this planet or I don't want to have a third dimensional experience anymore. I hope I don't come back or if I do come back, I'm going to do it differently. There is no back to come to. There is no here to come to. There is no future. Everything is happening now. And all that we're being given the chance to do is here on this, we are living, majority of us is living already in our higher self, already in the fifth dimension and beyond. We're already existing in our soul. And then our soul says, okay, this could be interesting to have this little experience. So it literally coalesces this idea into what we call a third dimensional experience. But the majority of us is just looking on and saying, well, that's interesting. So we create this experience. We have the experience. But then as we gain the wisdom from it, we start returning to the wholeness. So it's, it's just, I know I always describe this as, you know, the moon going from the new moon to the full moon and then the full moon going back to the new moon. We have the, the experience building the, new, the full moon and then we go, okay, seen it, and then bring it back. So we never actually leave our soul or our spirit or our higher self. We're just literally focusing, and that focus allows us to have what we call a physical experience, but really it, let's call it a creative experience where time and space are involved. And then when we've got everything we want out of that experience, it all just dissolves back. Not, it doesn't break down, but it's like, okay, this, I don't need it anymore. So we bring the energy back to the wholeness. I, I ask us all to just step away from this idea of past and future. I know I was talking about past, but it was the only way of describing events in the past that have happened. But literally what we're doing is we're moving ourselves between parallel lives and saying, okay, I, yes, I am this and I'm that. And what we're doing is bringing all the bits that we need from different lives into this life, what we call into this life, in order to ex enhance this experience. So I don't want to go down that road because that becomes a bit slippery. But what I'm wanting to say is, let's move away from the ideas, oh my God, the world's falling to pieces, this is where it is. No, what's happening is that we're being given the chance to make these choices in a way we've never had before. As I said, we are highly evolved now, we have this frequency. It is not about moving into the fifth dimension and ascending. It's the only ascension is that we stop thinking of ourselves blocked in this one matrix that we have to escape. As soon as we recognize that, wow, I've just created this and, I, and it will dissolve once I take what I want from it. It's no different from an actor being in a play. The actor steps on, puts the clothes on, acts in the play. Everybody goes home and the actor goes home. We can stop seeing ourselves as blocked in a situation. I have to do this. Then we start to recognize we have so much choice. And it's not to say, oh, I have choice. I don't have to experience this. It's much more, that's why we're here, is to have choice. That's what creation gives us. And over time, and, and this is what Bashar says, is that this time we have so much choice. We can say, oh, which version, as he says, which version of earth do we wish to live on? And it's not all in our head. We live it. 
Yes, there were things going on. But in my world this morning, the sun was shining, the mountains were singing with me, etc. That's my experience of Earth. Doesn't mean I deny everything else, but in that moment, that was my experience of Earth. In this experience of Earth, I'm talking with you. That's all that matters. That's my creative experience in this moment. And as we live more and more in resonance with the experience of Earth that we or the dream of Earth that we think, oh, I quite like this one, we will meet more and more people who are living in that same dream. Not because you've coerced them in there, but you're like, okay, yes. And you must be seeing that already. I recognize you know, most of my friends are living very similar worlds as I am. I don't have people who don't, don't necessarily agree with me, but people who are like, yes, that's how I see it. And what he's saying, in time, we won't actually see different versions of Earth. We'll say, okay, this is a version of Earth we like. doesn't mean we won't have choice, but we won't choose to jump into other versions because this is where we feel that we can grow, we can experience ourselves. And when you don't want a physical experience of creation, then you won't have one. It's not, again, 90% of you isn't having this experience. Let's say 99% of you isn't having that experience. It's only this tiny part that we say, oh, yeah, yeah, I can feel the solidness and I'm time and space. So the why rather than the how and when, which feels like something that is both time and space, how and when, the why is a deep inner thing, feeling. And so every time we drop into the why, we're saying, why am I doing this? Allows us to dissolve that which no longer resonates with us, just in our thoughts. No, that, that, why am I doing this? No, I don't think I need to do that. No, that should is not there. No, I don't think someone needs me. <laughs> when we drop into the why as I am a creative human being who is, is, is already highly spiritual, but I'm making this one choice for my, my soul has made this one choice to have a physical reality in order to bring new consciousness to the universe. What a gift. And it's just about choice. So again, just going back to my idea of the Orion Wars not quite finishing, it's all that's happening is that the, the beings, whether I was part of that or not, I don't actually resonate with that as part of my life or my soul's life. But the fact is, it's like, okay, let's do it different. Again, choice is here for everybody. And so all the beings, all the soul families and all the star families are all saying, okay, there's choice here. Which way do we want this to end this time rather than the other time? Okay, so we can come right back to our families. It's like, what choices do you want to make so that your family line does not continue an old pattern that was there in the past, if we're going to again use the word the past? What are you doing differently? What choices are you making? Because that's why we're here. Again, I don't want to get caught up in the past, but we're literally freeing everything that got locked into a time and space, a three-dimensional world, a matrix, we're unlocking it and saying, you have choice. And with that choice, everybody's free to recognize that this is a joy to be on this earth at this time. And that we can choose ways that are more coherent, not only with ourselves, but also for humanity and anybody else here. So I think I'm going to complete on that. I hope that's given you something to think about. And as I end with, be careful of just keeping talking about how and when and what and come back to the why. And deeply take that why into our being so that we can express new ways from the place of choice and enjoy these new ways that are opening up to us in such an amazing way. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Heart Speak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Please check out all Heart Speak episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. Heart Speak is also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Tumblr, 
and now playing on Amazon Music and iHeartRadio. You can also watch the Archive Podcast on Christine's channel on YouTube and now on Rumble. Connect with Christine on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook group, The Great Mother Calling. Do share with family, friends, colleagues. Join us next time for another edition of Heartspeak.